and we actually got an eviction notice. Um, and that was terrifying. Yeah. Good morning. So one thing that's super nice about having this new camera, which I mentioned, I don't think I told you, we got a GoPro 9. Um, it's something I've been wanting for a really long time. We have a big bulky camera. Well, that big bulky camera means that I really can't take you all to do chores because my hands are full with buckets and there's just no room for the camera and the animals knock it over and it's big and expensive. So this GoPro is supposed to be like indestructible. It's smaller, it's lighter. So I know y'all don't really care too much about that, but the benefit for you all is you get to come around with us a lot more because you're a lot easier to carry around. You're a lot lighter. You've lost some weight. I appreciate it. Let's do this. So everybody's doing good. Everybody's eating all the good herbs. I think we need some more feeders. I also give them three spots out here to eat out of. Some of them just don't like messing with the goats. Like Miss Bessie. Mr. Bessie, I'm sorry, buddy. He's getting big, nice and chunky. Our new roosters are doing are getting along just fine with everybody. Turkeys are just pain in my butt, but you know, it is what it is. And the guineas are doing good. They'll probably fly away before I can get too close to them. They're just, you know, shady birds. <laughs> but they're all there and they're all doing great. They go on their coop every night and we let them out in the mornings and they just go have a good time eating ticks. You got caught in there. <laughs> And then these guys who were hanging out with our meat chickens who are no longer with us, um, it's time for them to move to the big barn. They were too small when we moved them the first time. They just came out of the fence and came right back over into this one because this is what they know home. Um, but they're finally getting to the size to where they won't be able to get out of the hose of our fence. And so we'll need to move them over there. And then so we can let this area recover and move it and mow it and let the grass grow back for our next round of meat chickens. Good morning, Ellie. All right, morning chores are done, and we just got done getting all the packages done to send out to y'all for all the calendula and comfrey salve that you bought, and now Jen's making the kid lunch. Yep. <laughs> Chores are done, um, the kids are fed, we got all the orders out. First off, thank you all so much for that. Um, you I have no idea how blessed we are that anybody's into our products, mainly Jen's products, I'm the sous chef. Um, but it's just amazing. We've done uh, several treks throughout our life of trying to make homemade goods. It's fallen flat, you know, like nobody bought anything. Um, and now we can successfully say that we do have that and it's because of you all. Um, but it got us thinking about our story. And a lot of you all um, have joined our YouTube channel since we've been here at this house. Yeah. And maybe you didn't catch some of our older videos or you haven't, you know, we've, we've gotten a lot out there. So it's hard to catch them all. Um, so we thought it would be a good time to tell you all our story. Yeah. So if you've been with us for a while, first off, thank you. Um, but this would be good because we're going to get into a little bit more detail about our lives than I think that we ever have. Um, and it's because we just, we love being open to you all. We know it connects to someone that's watching. 
and we want to just be a light for that person we want them to know that there is an end um, to get out of whatever hole you may be in and so it's very important for us to share so we're gonna start back to when we were dating and I promise this won't be too long-winded she'll kick me if I do uh, um, but we wanted to start back from the beginning so the beginning of when we started dating and how we met each other you want to share that part yeah so it was about nine years ago and uh, we started dating quickly um, everything escalated quickly but the main goals I told Zach and we've mentioned this before is that I wanted us to be um, a homeschooling family I wanted to raise our children I wanted to stay at home and I knew that that would come with a lot of sacrifices and it did um, but eventually it did work out but that was our main goal um, so we kind of had to look at that and figure out how that was going to be done and that had a rough start yeah and so I was uh, when she told me that I was like yeah absolutely I agree I'm with you um, but I guess immediately in my head I'm thinking like when we could financially like do that right right um, but there's never a right time for that answer there's never a, like yep we are financially stable to like make this move you're always going to second guess yourself at some point and say, oh, no, let's not do that yet. Well, I was making like nine bucks an hour. Um, I was actually working at AT&T. Um, I was a store manager at a, an AT&T store. She was working, wiping butts um, <laughs> as, a as, a, as a CNA. Um, and I loved my job. <laughs> yeah, and things were fine. Um, well, in the midst of that, I was making decent. I mean, for like straight out of college, which I'm a... I did not graduate um, throughout college. Um, it was just a whole thing, um, but that's okay. It's, you know, you don't have to. We have the experience was worth it. Um, she decided, we decided to stop. We were not married yet. Yep. We were pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, and so she decided to stop working and I agreed with her that it was right because the price in a babysitter was not going to be any it was going to cost the same amount as she was making. Right. So it made zero sense. Um, in the midst of that, um, my AT&T store got shut down. Yeah. So there was a, about a month when I had no job, she had no job, and she was pregnant with Wyatt. And I was like sweating bullets mm -hmm. because we were engaged to get married. We had a baby boy on the way, and we were not making any money. And so we had a duplex together. Mm -hmm. I had sold my nice truck that I had bought on my own because it was family man time, right? Um, didn't need that big payment that we had um, and then thankfully I was finally able to get a job um, thanks to her mom um, as like a customer service rep for um, Kentucky Health Insurance kind of thing um, within there it was decent money but it was not enough to support two people a baby and a rent yes. all the stuff right all the things that came into play so when Wyatt was born and I don't know if you remember this or not, but I remember it like clear as day. When I was born, I was only able to take one week off work. That's all I was able to have. Um, and that was without pay. And yeah, and that was <laughs> without pay because I didn't get PTO yeah. or anything. And that was actually before I worked at Kentucky Health Insurance. That was the previous place. But anyways, um, we were sitting there and I was looking at her and I was looking at Wyatt. And I, you know, just the happiest man on earth, um, but also the, like, the scaredest man on earth. Um, and I hope I didn't show that too much. Um, but I was very scared. Um, when we had what I got back to work, we were unable to make that July rent payment yeah. um, because I had taken that week off. Um, we were really getting converted into jobs and we actually got an eviction notice. Um, and that was terrifying. Yeah. So we tr figured out a plan. <laughs> um, some family of ours that was on the old comp compound had a trailer that we could rent out. Um, it was a little bit cheaper rent. It was something that we felt that we could afford um, and make it work. So thankfully, in that transition of getting evicted and moving into this place, we didn't. There was no time lapse in us losing a place to live. Um, so we lived there for a long time, mm -hmm. and that's when things really got rough. Yeah. We were scraping along. We were paying our bills. However. Here's something that I don't know many people know, and we didn't know for a while until someone told us. It's not the greatest advice in the world, but it gets you by. Our bank allowed us to be $500 overdrafted. As long as we had one day that week that we were on the positive yeah. side of things. 24 hours. 24 hours, and so I got paid weekly at this job. And so every Friday when I got paid, we shopped one day. <laughs> one day. 
We took for necessity. We, yes, for necessities. We took five hundred dollars cash out because we didn't want the other overdraft fees. It's like one overdraft fee to just overdraft it all. Um, and that was our day that we got our necessities for the week: yeah. food, formula, diapers, etc. Um, and that's all the money we spent. And so, I mean, I know that might sound like a lot, but I'm talking bills too, like mm -hmm. rent, electric, water, all those things. Um, we didn't have internet. Um, we were able to like get it off my mom because yeah. her house was close enough. Um, so yeah, all of that one day, take it out. And so we did this for what? Four or five months. Wow, yeah. It became a thing. Like it became a it's, thing. That's how we had to live. But we were not satisfied with it. Obviously, we we wanted more drive. It's just we a just, meantime. Yeah, we just needed time to get to where we needed to go. So I'm working in a call center. Um, I'm enjoying my work. It's not bad. Um, I'm starting to learn more, and I'm starting to get a little bit more creative in the technical side of things um, that I had no intentions on doing. Well, I got offered like the big break. Right, it was the big break to become a contractor and like have a salary change that was unlike any other. Um, I got bumped up uh, to about sixty grand, mm -hmm. right? So that going from nine dollars an hour to like sixty grand, I mean, like, wow, game changer, world is solved. I can provide for my family now. I mean, I'm just so blessed to have this opportunity. That same day, I got told that I'm getting promoted. The bank calls us and says. You can no longer overdraft. We're turning it off. This is no longer an option for you. And I begged them. I pleaded to them. I'm like, I told them, I promised. I said, this will be my last time doing this. I got promoted. I'm going to start making money and I will never have to overdraft again. But I was just told today, give me two more. Give me two more weeks of doing this and I promise it'll be the last time I overdraft ever again. Yeah. And it was. And it was. And we still have the same bank, actually. Yeah, we still have the same bank. <laughs> so that's pretty cool, you know? We were like a success story to them, too. Yeah, and so it, it meant a lot, that promise I made to that bank teller that gave us the opportunity and understood our story and believed that it was actually going to be the last time. Because how many times they probably hear that in a day? Yeah. Right? You know, like, I, whatever, dude, we can't. Like, it's over. But they gave us a shot. And I am so thankful for them. And I never want to overdraft a bank again. Yeah, we never will. <laughs> so life's better. We're paying our bills. We know what we can shop on Tuesday. Yeah. On Thursday, it doesn't just have to be on Friday. And I don't have that fear of the bank declining um, that one day that we needed the money to be able to support. Well, fast forward a little bit. I'm getting tight into my job. I'm getting promoted a few more times. Things are going good. In my eyes, bam, I get fired. Basically, I mean, like my contract ended, but I got fired. And it was, we won't get into detail about it because it was not a correct firing in my own opinion. Um, however, I did, like that night, we were actually looking at a new house to rent. Mm -hmm. We get in the truck, my contracting company says, Zach, what happened? I'm like, what do you mean what happened? He said, you're, they canceled your contract effective immediately. And I mean, it was just, was like, oh my gosh, I ruined it, like it's over. But thankfully, we were able to have an opportunity to move to North Carolina. So I didn't lose my, I didn't get fired from my contracting company. That contract just ended. So they knew that it wasn't right. Um, there was no wrongdoing in my situation. And so they found me a job in North Carolina. So before he got fired, we had decided to build a pole barn house and we were gonna put it on the top of the hill. Um, the trailer we were living in was on the bottom and at the very top was where his mom and stepdad owned. And they had told us, hey, you should put up a pole barn and you guys can live up there. Um, so, you know, when he got fired, that kind of ruined all that. But the plans were already moving forward with that. The, the shell was, was there. Yeah. yeah, the shell was already up and we were already going forward. However, it was empty. There was nothing in it. And at that point we were like, well, he's fired. We can't afford to stay here and have him working at a factory or something and build a house. That's just not going to work. So we decided to go with North Carolina. It was a good opportunity. Um, we lived there for almost a year, had a wonderful time. We became a family on our own. It was just the four of us and it was just, it was lovely. Yeah, and it was only nine months. Yeah. It felt like it was about three or four years, but we were really only there for nine months. Um, and we we landed back into Brokeville mm -hmm. while we were down there. I was making good money with the contracting company, but North Carolina is just so expensive. So we tried to get as cheap of a house as we possibly could but rent was still like thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars yeah. and everything there was just expensive. Like we were like living like we normally do 
but it just it was taking so much more of our money yeah um so. but it, it made us get back to like how we used to do yeah and it was a good opportunity for him to build his resume and then once he did that and he had another job under his belt then we could start looking back at kentucky which we decided that we wanted to do we wanted to be back with near like immediate family um so he found another job and we decided to move back and that's when we said okay we're gonna finish this pole barn house and this is going to be our dream we had a dream to complete yes and you know things happened and that got difficult and eventually it became a choice to say we want to live here so bad that we're going to make the sacrifice to live semi off grid just to be in this house and be able to have our family and be near everyone so we did that for five years um, we went without running water for two it was difficult, but we made it work. It was a choice. It wasn't because we were poor. We could have given that up and went and rented, rented a house in town and been perfectly fine, but we wanted to be there. Um, and I guess that's, you know, kind of the whole moral of the story. It's what you're willing to sacrifice to get to where you want to be. Yeah. Um, we did have electric, thankfully, but, you know, as most of you have seen, we didn't have air conditioning. Um, we, we didn't, didn't have, have flushing toilet yeah, we the whole time. We had plumbing through our sinks, but we didn't have indoor plumbing as, as far as, you know, toilets and stuff like we that. We didn't have a septic or anything, yes. so we couldn't put that in. Yeah, and I mean, that was, it was hard, but we also really enjoyed it because we were so happy mm -hmm. where we were and we were living our dream and we knew that it wouldn't always be that way. I mean, we, we could have eventually gotten a septic put in and, you know, had the official stuff done, gotten, you know, official AC so that life wasn't so difficult. Um, but we decided not to. And her and I had been thinking of what we wanted more um, in life after that because we're, we're always dreaming. We're, we never are satisfied and I think that's a good thing to do. Um, you can appreciate and bloom where you are. Um, however, never stop dreaming of what more you want for your family. That doesn't always mean a move. That just means what's next in your life. Um, so we had been doing that and then abruptly my stepdad, which I referred to him as my dad a lot, uh, my actual blood dad is still alive, and we have a great relationship, but Gary was uh, a father figure to me from the time I was two years old on. Um, and he taught me most everything that I know. Um, I did live with my mom, so I was more directly with him um, than my actual uh, blood dad. But anyways, uh, he taught me everything I knew uh, when it comes to hard work, farming, well not really farming, but just mainly about hard work um, and the drive uh, to get what you want. So he abruptly passed away the summer of 2019, July 2019. Um, we were actually headed up to an event in Michigan um, for the Hootenanny. It's a uh, homestead conference event, um, a little bit smaller base, but we were actually in Michigan when my father abruptly passed of a heart attack. Um, they call it the Widowmaker. He did not have an autopsy or anything like that, but that's what they're assuming um, happened to him. So when that happened, um, there was life insurance issues that came into play. Um, and basically because we were on my mom's land, whatever really she decided to do impacted what we did because we we couldn't sell ours and so mom did decide to sell um we did not take any money from that sale uh whatsoever because we wanted our mom to have my mom to do whatever she could to survive because she just lost her husband so um we found this place that now you are very familiar with uh, my mom found a place that she was able to thankfully pay cash for which is amazing for her she still does have to work, uh, unfortunately, but at least she doesn't have that house payment weighing over her head anymore. Um, and now here we are, and you would think, dream complete, right? Yeah. So my job um, that I had, I've been with the same company since we moved back from North Carolina. Um, it's an amazing company. They're great. They work with me well. Um, and I am 100% work from home. Um, I think that's one of the top questions that a lot of our new folks ask is, do you have a job? Yes, I do. Um, I am 100% work from home. Um, that does make it a lot easier to be able to do some of this stuff. Now, my job is very demanding. I'm on phone calls pretty much all day. So even though I'm here, I'm not outside able to do work right. that often. Um, it does usually hit work time around five o'clock, just like it does for most of you all when you clock out for the day. Um, however, if say a goat runs out um, of the fence, I'm here, I don't have to travel home um, and I can help get them back in. Um, for that brief time so from that aspect it's extremely beneficial yeah and thankfully with the move and building his resume and all that this job was able to provide security basically forever yeah. and that is wonderful it's something that we don't take advantage or we don't take what's the right word um we don't, we don't take, take for granted for granted there you go. yeah um, not one day because 
coming from where we came from, you know, making zero dollars to making nine dollars to making a, a substantial a, a substantial chunk, then losing that, and then now making enough to support our entire family, be able to buy us a home. Um, it's it's wonderful. So yeah, it's I don't know. It's I guess a sense of security. It's a yeah. safety net because I'm no longer a contractor. I'm officially a full time employee with this company. Yeah. Um, and that goes a long way. Contractors, as important as it is to do that in the get-go of your resume building, um, you make good money, but at any moment they can have that phone call that they did to me. Right. They don't even talk to you. They call your contractor come and say, terminate immediately. Yeah. Um, and that's a scary thought um, in contractor world, but it's worth it. And the whole point of this is that everything's worth it. Every decision that you're making, every move that you're making, um, as risky as it may seem, it's worth it because you got to have your dreams. You got to know where you want to be. And for me, farming was the added benefit. I knew that was her goal, but the primary goal for me as a husband and a father was to allow her to be able to work from home, take or not work from home, <laughs> to be a stay at home mom. It is work from home um, and raise our children the way that she had always dreamed of and that I agreed to when I asked her to marry me. Um, I know that might sound silly to some, but like I knew what she wanted. And so when I agreed and I asked her to marry, marry me, that was my commitment to her that I believe in your dreams as well. And they became mine. So it was one of my biggest goals is to be able to financially support my family and what her original dreams was when we were first starting the day. So I guess what you can get from our story is no matter how uncomfortable you might have to be for a while, you can still make the best of it. You can have a wonderful family. You can, at the end of the day, everybody can be happy and full of life and full of love, even though you are currently sacrificing things that you may want or things that are even necessities, you know, needs, but it always works out. And sometimes just being uncomfortable for a short amount of time or what feels like a lifetime, it can get you to where you wanna be. Yeah, and you, you just gotta have faith. Um, faith is, you know, the utmost importance in that, in that journey. Um, you have to lean on faith, you have to uh, pray about it, you have to, really thank God for everything that he does give you um, and not what you're not receiving, right? Um, you got to focus on the, the actual benefits that you are getting. And that um, doesn't that. mean to sit in it either. That no. doesn't mean to sit in an uncomfortableness and, you know, live off what people hand you or give you or try to support you with. You you can use that for a time and then you get up and you do better. Yeah. yeah and you sacrifice. You know, you might have to leave your family for a year and you might have mm -hmm. to go to another state and build your resume but it's worth it, even though it's hard. Yeah, and it, you know, you ask questions, um, ask for others' guidance um, in these situations and what they may do, but ultimately it's your choice, your family's choice. And when I say your family's choice, I'm talking about you, your spouse, if you have one, and your children. I'm not talking about outside family. Um, you know, our moms and our dads are so important to us, but it is, it's not their marriage and it's not their kids that, that are supporting. And you don't want your grandparents, the grandparents of your children to support your family your whole life. So sometimes you have to make that hard decision that's really gonna upset them, but it's the better for your immediate family. And it might be temporary, like she said, a year in another state. That year was tough. Family had to travel down to visit us. We did a lot, that's like when social media was really getting big and like we did Snapchats and all that stuff to try to stay in contact. Um, but we moved back. I mean, it's mm -hmm. those things that you, the decisions you have to make for your spouse and for your children to live the dream that you all agreed on when you asked each other to marry you. Yeah. So this kind of turned into like a Friday Night Lights get to know us, our story kind of situation here. Um, but the whole point was we wanted you all to, to understand us more uh, for the ones that haven't been around. Um, and for the ones that have, I don't think you heard most of that stuff. I don't think we've shared yeah. it before. So um, if anything, it was just to get to know us. Um, but what we hope is that someone out there is going through a, some part of that story that we just told you all, um, and this helps you uplift you a little bit, um, continue to dream, continue to have faith, and continue to give praise where praise is needed. Um, but never sit, never settle on what you're at right now. Um, always be dreaming to move forward, to better yourself, and to better your family. But as that is said, I think that's enough because I was starting to ramble. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure to down below. We love you. Until the next one. <laughs> Bye. Bye.